welcome back to Momentous Struggles, continuing videos of Adepticon 2024. This is the t round two of the team event. We'll be featuring Team Hello there, as well as Team Last Minute. So we'll go ahead and jump right into coverage. Yeah, all they're shaking. Honor is intact. Honor is intact. I love that. I love that he just had, like... The chutzpah to dress as a Sith Lord to yep. like, because there are more of us than you think there are, just people deny it. And Dan, every time I'm very much, he's the Jedi, he is the, you know, the good noble to a fault person, and I am just full of anger and rage. I, I appreciate <laughs> that. But I might as well be honest about it. Very much so. Very much so. So, yeah, so we're going to go and get started here um, and like off to the races for sure. Going and getting the placements. Now you guys covered five rounds yesterday, yeah? Yes, yeah, so there was three rounds um, and then we cut to a top four. Okay. And so that we had two rounds. So yeah, it was a long, long yeah, day yeah. For, for everybody. What's on your agenda today? So basically it's just four rounds of the team. Okay. So that's a little bit better. Uh, in about an hour, Will Schick is going to be coming and joining us. So he's probably going to be, yeah, so he's probably going to be uh, doing a little bit of commentary. So we might have a little in between here where we're not okay. going in between the interview questions and, and, and commentating and everything along those lines. Um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, then so two more rounds of that, and then and yeah, we're good to go. And then tomorrow is the big event, the, the premiere showdown event that we're going to be doing. So that'll be... I believe three, maybe four rounds, and they're going to cut to a top eight for that on Sunday. Cool, very cool. <laughs> and now, what does the the game clock look like for this? For I know that for we're here they're running, so they're running two hours. Okay. At the ninety-minute mark, you're going to do something called mission critical. So, basically, the way that you win a game is there's the struggle tracker. Uh, which moves back and forth, so it's right okay. in the center. It starts yeah. right in the center, and basically, what you want to do is you want to get it on top of those black squares on top. Okay. Uh, you move by each objective that you have. You get one point, and then after, but if you wound somebody, like if you so, if you basically in the equivalent in MCP would be dazing somebody. Okay. So if you daze somebody, you get what's called a momentum token, and if so, you can move that momentum your way while you're moving the struggle tracker as okay. well. So. So you can, and, and there's multiple different ways that that move that can you can get a different ones like there's some people that have abilities that can give you momentum. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have the struggle tracker and it's not on your side of where the zero is after you move it, then you can get a momentum for that. So there's like it's kind of like a catch up mechanic. So if when all of that happens, then basically whoever gets to that they win that struggle. So there's not rounds. It's basically, you just have to win Thank two you. struggles. Okay. All right. And you just have that back and forth until it happens. Yeah. And basically, but I would, on average, like you have your deck, you draw from the deck, and that's who you activate. You can put that character into reserve. Mm -hmm. um, it costs you a force to do so, of course. And, then, and that's like your like your special abilities. You, they cost points. Like if you look here, like okay. that's the force points. It would cost, like Mother Tiles, and two force points to do her manipulating hands. Okay. Them. And then basically Very they would cool. just end up moving. Like when you, if you do that, you put them in reserve, and then you flip over your next card, and that's who you're going to gotcha. activate. So each character or unit has their own uh, card, and there is also a wild card called the Shatterpoint, and okay. that allows you to activate anybody you uh, have. Ooh, all right, okay. So there's a little bit of random generation with all of that, um, but outside of that, it's uh, you, you, you know you're, you're still going to get there and move it, and you get to play yeah. who you want to, and everything along those lines. Dan always thought that Shatterpoint, like that system of like drawing to determine your activation, he always thought that that would really appeal to me because I get like analysis paralysis when it comes to like MCP. I have five characters. What do I do? You know, it's like, I don't know who to go next. And he's like, well, if, if you just draw and it tells you, then that's that's who you, who you go with. And I, I always thought that that was a really cool mechanic. Yeah. I, I like that. I like being able to like, where it's like the decision, like, the decision, but at the same time, it's like you, you you can decide if you have that reserve spot open. Like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm gonna put them in reserve. Yep. Like, because there's some characters you just don't want them to go very early. Right. You know, you, Absolutely. You, there's yep. some of your more powerful models. Like, you don't want to run one of your like your, like Lord Maul way up front as quickly as possible. You, right. you want it. You want to save him to where he can 
because he has abilities where he can just get right up next to somebody and just hit the, hit them really hard. Yeah. So, so similar to like Hulk on MCP, mm -hmm. if he gets hurt, he has more attack dice. Gotcha. So that's okay. one of those where you really want to take advantage of like that him being able to do his attack because you only get one. Yeah. So. Yep. I do like that strategy mindset too of like, okay, so this is who I've drawn. Now, how do I make that work to yeah. my advantage? I do really like that. So there is still a lot of thinking and strategizing. Yeah, the Sith Lord says I, I won't steal that what I, is already mine. <laughs> it's true. Possession is nine tenths of the law. Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I've heard that before. Yep, that was my dad <laughs> saying all the time. All right, yeah, and then they're just getting their final setup, getting all their force out. So you have the force tokens, which they're kind of putting off to the side over there. on over there trying to slip slip the, the, the acrylics into his, into his pocket there. I saw you. I saw you. <laughs> right? It's like, a, it, I wonder what they're trying to tell us with all the Mando stuff on there, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the way. This is the way. Definitely. No, they're very cool. Very cool acrylics. And I think I, I have definitely posted a picture of that on the on our momentous struggle on Facebook as well as like because I got a really cool picture of that and they have some really cool dice like um, swirl dice like the brown for the attack dice and green uh, defense dice so they, they have some different new okay. dice as well so that's really cool so yeah definitely definitely exciting to see like like AMG's going and giving like because the community loves dice oh my know? gosh everybody yes. just loves dice yes of like any kind of gaming like. D and D, any kind of like fantasy role play, anything. People love dice. The number of dice boxes, empty dice boxes that we have found in our basement yep. that just have like you know that core set of like RPG dice. Right. It's, I feel like I found we have them on a shelf. It's like eleven empty boxes, and that's not even counting the ones that are still in the boxes. Right. It's just people love dice. It's true. So set the charges. They have a dash on their chest. Right. So with this with sabotage showdown, they have. They have on, on their abilities that anytime you shatter point somebody, you have a special ability that you can use where on their activation they get to make a small movement. Oh, okay. Which is called a dash, basically. Acolytes got flipped over. <clears throat> right. So yeah, now we got the Night Sister Acolytes that have been drawn, and they're determining if they're going to go forward with them or if they're going to put them in the reserve. So acrobatic, so the Night Sisters are going to go ahead and acrobatic advance. do their acrobatic advance. And basically what that is, if I can find it, there we go. Yeah. They can basically make a jump move, which is basically still a small move, but they can go up any elevation as oh, they do okay. so. And they gain a hunker token, which basically, as long as someone doesn't come with engagement range, which is range two, they can go ahead and add an extra dice to their attack roll. Nice. Very cool. So it basically gives them what's called cover. So cover in this game is adding a dice instead of just converting gotcha. something. Okay. I do really love the boards and how the terrain is so much more like interactive. And yes. it's almost like another player or opponent in a way like I, I imagine you can really like use it to your advantage or it could be detrimental in some yeah, ways learning to play around with that uh is definitely important for sure is like learning exactly how 
you want to utilize that terrain and how to play into it and play with it is very, very important because, like, one, you just, being able to get up on top of the terrain is, you, you can't, you can't do a long movement mm -hmm. to get up on top of the train. You have to do your short movement. So basically, it's like, well, how am I going to get up there? Can I get up to where I want to go? And two hunkers on them. So two hunkers on them as well. So they took cover as well. So basically, they, they use their acrobatic advance, did a hunker, and then they're going to try and do their advance to get onto the point on the very top of okay. the screen. Gotcha. And now they're going to control that point. Now, as the first player, they do not move the struggle tracker at this point in time. That's basically kind of like the offset, being able to get on the point first. Sure. So basically, but they do control that point at this time. So when it does come back to them, unless are the other team, the team last minute ends up taking that point away from them, they will score it. And now we are back onto the other side. And usually in the first couple turns of the game, a lot of what we're going to see is just positioning. There's not going to be a lot of attacks. Mm -hmm. And the shatter point comes up already. Oh. Usually you don't want to see that this early in the game. Yeah. So what happens, and then they're going to make the decision whether they want to utilize this right now. Or if they want it, they can pay a force, shuffle it back into the okay. library. and, and they, But whatever is up on top of their deck, they absolutely have to play. They don't get that adoption to put that into reset. Okay. Yep. So they're going to think about that right now. What would you do? It, especially this for the first turn of the game, I would definitely be putting that in, shuffling it in, simply okay. because it's such a powerful effect of being able to activate whoever you want. Mm -hmm. and, and you want to be able to sit there and do that when it's more crucial. Right now is right. not the most yeah. important time to do that. Okay, so they're going to use gonna, it. They, they feel that getting him up into the fight as early as possible is the most important thing to do. So they are going to go with Grand Inquisitor. So they're starting off by activating his tactic and then the. Got it. Okay. So they're going to start out with his tactic ability because, like, you know who we are, which is basically the start of his activation. He can take a secondary. And, or a ally inquisitor uh, supporting unit. So either the, and he has fifth brother with him, so he's gonna go ahead and take fifth brother. Okay. And one character in the unit, and hit this unit, so himself and them, they both get to dash forward, a small movement. All right. And then after that, since he does did do the shatter point, he's also gonna get an additional dash out of that for his character. So basically, he's gonna move him two small That's moves. a lot forward. of movement, right. yeah, okay. <laughs> So moves Grand Inquisitor up onto that point, taking cover. taking cover. So that's going to give him his hunker token as well. Okay. Should control three points here as well. Then so now basically each side is controlling three points. Okay. And then so like the nice thing is like so on primary units and some secondary units they have two sides to their stance card, and that can dictate the amount of dice that they're rolling. So since okay. he was on his offensive side. Uh, he's, which only has five defensive dice. He's now going over to his depth show side, okay. which gives him six defensive dice. So just one extra dice on top of whatever he has for hunter. Right. And can they do that like at will or do you Once have to per pay? turn. Okay. Once per turn they can do that. So you want to make sure that you are exactly where you want to be at the start of the game so that when you are, if you are going to switch over to a different side for the rest of the game that you, you're at the right spot. Gotcha. Reserving Mother Talzin on the other side. Okay. And they have these super commandos, is, is what he ended up drawing instead. So this is one of the core box units that we have seen. Uh, definitely a fun unit. Uh, they get they got a lot of movement because you can pay a force to go ahead and jump them up wherever you want. Uh, they have their ability, Mandalorians are stronger together, which allows them. If they, and they, they're allied to themselves, so they, they can trigger themselves by okay. ending their movement within two of one another. They get a focus, which allows them to add an extra attack to this. Okay. So very they can cool. be very strong as long as you're playing them. Yeah. Right. 
so that they do the Mandalorians are stronger together. They get that focus action. Where they are, they're within range to go ahead and attack the uh, the Grand Inquisitor. So you might, you might be seeing a great attack right into the Grand Inquisitor here. And they're going to jetpack and go ahead and jump. So they're really getting all over the place where they need to go and everything. Like that. So Amon is going and jumping in there to kind of just make sure he's getting exactly where he wants to be as far as placement is concerned. Amon and Jesse being both, you know, being very avid players, I, I think they kind of work well together in this kind of For format. sure. So now that he's now that they've gotten within that engagement range versus range two to your melee range, mm -hmm. uh, he's going to lose that hunker token. So now he doesn't have the additional defensive dice to roll because of them getting up and close. And, and then if you look like basically at their card, because they're in melee range, they actually get six dice instead of five oh. at range. So they definitely wanted to be engaged with yeah, them anyway. Okay. So here comes the roll. No critical successes. Uh, one, two, three, four failures. So that was uh, a little, little rough there. But he has two strikes and two uh, expertise. So then you look at the expertise chart, which gives him one critical success. Criticals cannot get blocked no matter what. Okay. So basically, it looks like it's going to be one going through because he he does have the blocks that block out the regular strikes. Mm. So just okay. one goes through. And that might have been a range attack from one. I don't know if they're both engaged or not. But so because there are two separate units, you get a two two separate attacks as well. So here comes the next okay. attack. Okay. He does get a critical success as well again, and two regular strikes, and then three successes on that as well. So if he is in melee, that's going to be two crits and a shove. If not, just wow. a damage or just one strike. So yeah, it looks like he is definitely in melee. Yeah, with expertise, Rick got turned down with the strike. But yeah. So lock and all frag users. So two crits will end up going through because he was able to reduce one of those crits down. So that means he's going to go two down his tree here. So Amon has a decision. He's going to definitely do two damage. Now is he going to do a damage and a disarm, which basically allows that stops them from being able to use their expertise chart mm -hmm. or a strain, which is strain is. So took two damage. And strain is similar. I, I compare it if, like for MCP side. I consider that similar to stagger. It, it doesn't take away an action, but so in, or you either take three damage or you have to shake them. Okay, gotcha. All together, five on attacks and a disarm. Okay, so he went with the disarm side of it. So he's going to do between both attacks, he did five damage. Okay. So Grand Inquisitor is still not down yet, but he has a disarm. So that means next time when he gets anything that's an expertise on his attack, he doesn't get to use that expertise charge. Okay. So overall, I mean, the, and the conditions, just like in any other game, conditions are very important. You know, like they For sure. they do a lot. Like especially turning off the expertises are really great. Um, either an expose the exclamation point mm -hmm. that turns off the defensive one. So like you're, that just basically just turns those into blanks. Like that's the equivalent of it. Like instead of that face doing something, now it's a blank. Okay. So it's like okay, you just that yeah. you turn that off. Yeah. There's another ability called pin. Pin is basically if they were to move, they can't. Move. Okay. It just deletes that movement. I feel like any kind of dice manipulation in any kind of dice-based game is incredible. Yep. Oh my goodness. We see. Okay. So B1s went to the bottom, and they're going with General Grievous here. Okay. So General Grievous can just hurt people. He, he yeah. is, he's just an attack <laughs> machine. If you go ahead and look, depending on what side of the, he is on, when it looks at his tree overall, he can just do damage for days. Oh my gosh, yeah. look at him. And he rolls eight attack dice, so he just r runs right in there. It's wild. Just hits as hard as he can. Uh, and he has an ability called Scuttle, which allows him to do a full large movement, his full advance, for one force. So he can just double move, basically, yep. if you pay the one force to do so, and then just do an eight dice attack. That's wild. <laughs> oh my goodness. And yeah, like you said, he just he just does damage. Yep. He's a damage dealer. Yeah. I mean, he, the, he was... He was a, at one point in time a, a normal human being, or not human being, but a normal reptilian being, right. and then turned like decided I want to be a droid and just destroy yeah. everything. He had one bad day at the office, and yeah. now look at him. <laughs> and 
I will read. Let me be right back for you guys. All right, so we've got some placement. General Grievous, he's up there on the top. On the top of the screen, rather. There's measurement happening. There's dice being grabbed. Cards being checked. Vincent, in chat, to answer your question, I hope that there would be more of a focus on tactical discussion um, as opposed to just, like, basics of gameplay. But with such a, a high-stakes event, I would hope for it. And I'm back. Basically, yeah, we just, uh, because of the joys of streams and everything like that, they get a, they got a little bit later of a start than the okay. rest of the group okay. over there. So we yeah. wanted to make sure that all being fair, they got a full game and they understand what's going on yeah. with that and Good. everything along those lines. So it looks like, it looks like there was an attack here. Was that General Grievous attacking? I'm yes. sure you were paying attention. Yes, I was paying attention, <laughs> yep. They moved up there, they were doing measurement. I was like, they're measuring, they're grabbing dice, All right. they're looking at cards. So it looks like it was two successes. On his quad arm side, he's gonna do five defense, uh, five damage, I should say. Uh, I don't think he has the droids in enough range to sit there and do an attack. It's hard to see from this particular angle because he could use his appetite for destruction ability, but it might not be there. So nope, they're ending their turn. And here we are, we just basically won on that side. And this is this is gonna be kind of where we are until someone can kind of break that parity is there's only there's six spots available to score off of. Mm -hmm. So until someone can stop scoring back and forth, that's you know, okay. what happens. Gotcha. Um, Paul, you bring up a good point. We are relatively close. I mean, I don't know, somewhat close to the table. I would say five feet, probably. Um, and with the ambient noise in the background, you know, it yeah. can make they it offered, difficult. Did did they flip? Don't don't ask me. What did they flip? Uh, what we call it over? Did they flip uh, the stance card for uh, Grievous? Just just look. Don't ask. looking at either this one or this one. Okay, so they did go ahead and say on the quad arm side, they didn't flip to the defensive side of, on quad arm, mm -hmm. from to the cunning warrior. So the the key there is that Grievous only has four di defensive dice right, on that side, yeah. and what, it, it makes him look pretty fragile. Yeah. Uh, as far as, and, and uh, able to be hit pretty good. So without moving over and adding that additional defensive dice on his on the warlord side, can't, can, can be a little bit of a hurt right. for you Would there. Would you so. have flipped him? Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's kind of like, that's pretty much, that the standard play, but I mean, again, you're yeah. on stream. Mm -hmm. They got a lot going on. Playing yes. against Jesse and Amon from you know the guys sure. that are probably the most popular podcast out there for Shatterpoint. So yeah. it's you know you're yeah. gonna you're, you you got a lot going on. For yeah, sure. mistakes are made for sure. Yeah. But I mean, with everything else, like I, you don't know how much other activations are gonna go go mm -hmm. on and everything on those sides. Aubrey gingerly lifting that little bridge so that another model can be placed with accuracy. Yep. We love the accuracy. Yeah, that's that's one of the, the with this game because there's so many different levels and so many different um, pieces of terrain. Mm. Playing around those pieces of terrain. I mean, you, like you watch Amon and he's like always holding his sleeves back yep. to sit there and yep. try and make sure he's not brushing up against anything. For sure.
right? So Lord Maul, he's using Lord Maul here, and Lord Maul has an ability to pull somebody in Ooh. and give them that exposed condition so that when he attacks them, they don't get to use those expertise dice. So that's basically what he did is he moves Maul forward, he used that ability, and now he's going to probably go ahead and put an attack into him to try and just... Okay. Lord Maul really hits really hard in this game. Mm. The MCP players behind us getting a little excited. Yeah. <laughs> Get some spicy over there. Right. All right, nice and big attack. It looks like a lot of expertise coming from the mall side here. So a mall, depending on his side, I mean, you're looking at damage or and a crit, no matter what, really, is it, depending on the side he's on. I'm assuming he's on his Dark Rage side, but you, you never know. But a lot of blocks there, a lot of blocks. So it's like, it, it doesn't look like he's gonna be doing a whole heck of a lot of, a lot down the tree here. So basically there was a re-roll there because there was confusion whether they rolled the attack, it was a range attack or a melee attack. So okay. basically there's a difference in the amount of dice that they roll. So basically they re-rolled the dice at that point in time because that's ultimately the most fair way to do yeah, things. Yeah, absolutely. So now they're... So seven damage, shove, reposition, and they did the expose again, I believe. Ladders Knocking ladders down. over, yep. That's that's the one of those with this game, they just the ladders just sort of flying yeah. everywhere. <laughs> I've I've actually used they like made little bumpers for the that can go onto the bridges so you can't get pushed off. I instead took those and glued them to the top of my bridge or my ladder so they can actually just hang off the top of the gotcha. train. So okay. I mean it's a nice little way to sit there and keep them in place and yeah. not have to worry about them flying off and everything along those lines. And so yeah did decide to go the way of using just two recovers. So Lord Maul has this ability where he can take damage instead of using force. Okay. So the recovers allow you to either heal some damage off of you or you can remove some of your special conditions. You can do one or the other for each one that you have. So since he has two recovers, he can remove two damage. So did a total of five damage. So yeah, pretty strong turn there. And it looks like we have Kalani Super Tactical Droid coming up next. So Kalani has a great ability on his activation. Any droid within range four of him can just move forward. Oh, okay. So he, that's what they're going to go ahead and just take a, advantage of at this point in time is moving those droids forward, just kind of like trying to get that rush going forward. Yep, so Kalani does his Roger Roger ability, moving the, moving the droids that he can within range four forward. 
And also, like on his attack, if he gets three down in his tree, he can get this ability for free called Tackle Network, which allows his battle droids to move and make a five dice attack as well. Wow. Okay. So getting a little bit more um, aggressive yes. with things with doing these actions. Correct. The, okay. the droids are really kind of wanting, like the, the main thing that you want to do with them is really swarm forward and attack with all your droids. And just like, and the nice thing with Kalani, he also has a target concentrate all firepower ability, where if you're within range of another droid, you can add an additional dice to your attack oh, as well. So okay. he just he cool. just makes all of his droids better in yeah. a lot of different ways. Yeah. So they're using my dice, and my dice are really bad and roll a lot of failure. So I apologize <laughs> in advance. And I can tell Aubrey's already telling them that it's my fault that I've done this to Haman. Uh -huh. So Haman is going to be complaining about me, I'm sure, for a while here. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> I don't, I'm not trying to make you sound like a bad guy, Emma. <laughs> you're just misunderstood. No, see, that's all. I corrupted my dice. So you're just using bad dice. That's what it is. <laughs> Going straight across. Yeah. So it's a... Um, Quite about a bit of damage that's going through here, just because unfortunately that was just a really unfortunate roll for Amon. So Ohalani is going to sit there and get a lot of damage through. Mm -hmm. uh, he is going to get a shove. He is going to get that tactical network off as well. Wow. So we're going to see total amount of damage done here. At least at least one shove. Wounded him. Okay. Did it, it went through the full tree? Yeah, the full tree. So basically that's going to we're looking at three, six, eight damage, two shoves. A repositioned by Kalani, which means he can move his full movement anywhere. Okay. Wow. And then on and the shoves basically you move a range one back. And you can do that twice. Okay. Uh, so there's a, a lot of displacement that happened there, and then again you're getting that attack by the droids as well. Yeah. So there this was a very good round for the the droids player here with last last minute coming up clutch. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like they really needed that. Yeah, I mean, looking at where that the struggle tracker is, I mean, uh -huh. it's really far on the uh, on uh, on Team Hello There's uh, side. So this is a good recovery for them for sure. Yeah. We have gotten the call from chat to burn your dice. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Okay, Izzy, you can replace them for me. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. <laughs> we, we, we'll have a we'll have a. A ceremony at Imperial. Oh. <laughs> we'll have a, we'll have a ceremony at the LGS for sure. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like a Viking funeral. <laughs> All right, and I think we're just finishing up the movements here. So they don't necessarily have to make a five dice attack either. They can dash, they can remove a condition, or or they can and um, make that five dice attack, or they can get a hunker token. Mm, so okay. it's like you have options with all of that. It's like you don't necessarily have to sit there and pump dice down at other, other opponent, but you can do other things as well. Right. They're gonna do the five dice attack. All right. So I've decided to do the five dice attack. Ooh, and yeah, like leading, leading over, you got <laughs> help, helping out your teammate, making sure that they're not uh -huh. getting fabric uh -huh. on the board and everything. So, and it looks like they're going into fifth brother. I think is what they're talking about of like who they're going to attack. Yeah. They're doing the five days of tag on the sisters just. Try and get into the, oh, into the Night the Sisters? Only, basically the only option. Got it. Yeah. So, yeah, so they're going to go into the Night Sisters, it looks like. I mean, they've been loosened up a little bit here. So, overall, and they do get the additional dice from Kalani. Three blocks is good for for uh, Jesse here. So, just one's going through. So, it is apparent that basically if you are on the light side, my dice will like you. Yeah. And if you are a member of the Sith, like Amon... Not the so dice much. just don't like you as much. So now mom will trigger off of that because they did wound a unit. 
Oh, so just all sorts of triggering abilities that happen. Like there's a there's gonna be so and so does this, the other person does that, and it's like there's a it's a huge back and forth basically going okay. on. So now, so Mother Talden, what she does is like when up, when someone is wounded, she can advance towards whoever did the wounding, and if she is in within range, can make an attack herself. Oh, okay. So like so kind of like a revenge. Move, yeah, ma ma mom's yeah. revenge, basically. Oh, I love it. <laughs> so basically, but as a mom, I get it. And it is—it's literally called the wrath of the great, great mother. mother. <laughs> yes, I love it. I really, really so yeah, love she basically it. just moves forward, and then she makes a five dice attack, basically, and it's a ranged attack. So you just. You want to kind of keep her in the middle or back a little bit, so she can just mom comes up and says, yeah. "Don't don't mess with my kids, or I'll shoot you." Leave my babies alone. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Protective mama. Mama. <laughs> mama bear coming out. They're discussing whether or not to bring mama in reserve. Okay, so okay. yeah, so they do have mother Talzin in reserve, and they're just contemplating on if that's the right play right now, uh, because they they need one, two, three, four, five. They need to move five in order to just end the struggle altogether. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, you would probably need to have four points. Well, I don't think you could really even do that. Even if you were to get like a mo momentum for a wound and four points, it's going to be pretty rough. But that, that does put the pressure back on last minute to sit there and really try and force them to make a play, depending on what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So Mother Talzin is going to come out of reserve, okay. so I think that's the, I mean, and I, I think this is actually the right play for sure, yeah. because they have, it looks like they think they have four points right now, so having the four points and maybe potentially being able to get a wound with Great Mother using your primary, who are the strongest units, to sit there and yeah. get that extra momentum really puts the pressure on it. So she'll use Great Mother's ability of Obscuring Shadows, which allows her to move another Death and Marion unit. It can, they get to make the small movement or the dash. So they'll go ahead and use Savage Oppress, who is a Death and Marion, and, and move them forward. Yep. Oh, she using is she, so using Savage. Yeah. So is she using Obscuring Shadows on Savage, or Savage is using his ability first? Okay, got it. So Savage will get actually two movements out of that because of because of Mother Child's and activating and then Obscuring Shadows will move them as well. So just all sorts of movement. Like yeah, for forward. sure. And you really need that with Savage Opress because he doesn't have a range attack, so he has to be in the fight and he has okay. to get really close so in. So he needs that little additional bump there. He does. I and mean, he's very strong once you mm -hmm. get him up front. He, he, has, he rolls a lot of dice, but he's only... I mean, he's a big brute of a character. Right, yeah. AMG really nailed, I think, the flavor of each of these characters mm. in their design. So it's really going to be exciting to sit there and, like, maybe pick, pick Will, Will Shick's brain a little bit about yeah. how how they decided to go about that. I'm sure that, you know, have to sit there and meet with with Star Wars people and make sure that they're hitting all the right notes and everything. But they, I think they knocked it out of the park. Yeah, sure. that's awesome. It looks like they're just kind of figuring out where they want to go and what they want to do with Mother Talzin here. Yep. 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 Just kind of getting that measurement down. So we got a little bit later of a start than the... Uh, the rest of the, stuff, the crew here. So basically what we're looking at is about, what are we, we're about 45 minutes in, so they really, really kind of want to get through this struggle and make sure that they're not going to go to time because it's like, before you know it, time's, oh, time runs out. So yeah, they're, yeah. so overall, another, yeah, not the greatest of roles. I mean, you, you really want to see some critical hits in there. Um, so didn't get a lot of those. He has two failures. One expertise on mom. They, use, they did use coordinated fire, so then of course, they Okay, so they used coordinated fire to give exposed, so they basically that took away the ability to use the defensive expertise. Okay. So only three blocks. It looks like it's going to be three successes. Yep, so the critical and two of the regular strikes are going to go through. 
I'm assuming she's on her last side, but I am not 100% sure. Five damage, two shots. Yep. Okay, no, so she is, they're actually on the Great Mother side. So five damage, two shots, so they do two damage and a uh, shove, one damage and a shove, and then two damage total. So a total of five damage going through, and a lot of displacement to move them to two off of there. Two shoves back. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Aubrey has improved, that is true. <laughs> They're saying that Aubrey looks a lot better today for some reason. <laughs> well, you know, Aubrey Aubrey it's has true. gone through some changes today. <laughs> this is the final form. <laughs> this is the final form, sorry, of everybody. <laughs> Aubrey, you're delightful. <laughs> yeah, Aubrey is currently our eyes in the sky sitting next to the table just to kind yeah. of relay information back to us so that we can let everybody know exactly what's yeah. going on. So we're doing the shoves. All right, yeah, so they're executing those shoves off right now. As you can see, just kind of doing the displacement that they get to do. Kind of try, just the final, like trying to like get that final placement, make sure everybody's good to go. I don't know what other actions they have at this point in time. Yeah, it's like Amon and uh, Jesse just kind of talking through. Mm -hmm. I mean, like it's, it's, I was, I had a conversation with uh, Amon yesterday. Yeah, it looks like they're moving that struggle yep. tracker again, right and it's it's so funny because like I played yeah one away, one away, so. I mean, I, I played competitive magic, and it's like, it's, it's so funny, like, and this was years ago. Okay, so Fifth Brother's getting activated, so it'll be interesting to see what they decide to do. But seeing, like, that intensity that he has mm -hmm. for competitive play, it's like, I remember having that mentality yes. at oh, one point sure, in time. Yeah. It's like, it's just that, that passion for the game and wanting to sit there and just get to that next level and then be the top player. It's like, it's amazing to see, see that passion that he, him and Jesse both have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who, who are they playing? They're just they're playing uh, the team. Team last minute. Team last minute. Yeah. I tell you, they're, they're just uh, not big podcasters or anything like that, but they are fantastic players for yeah. sure. As far as like, if you're asking what what they are playing as far as teams, uh, Jesse is playing a mother Talzin, along with Maul or uh, Savage and the Night Sisters. And then Jesse is playing, or I'm sorry, that's what Jesse's playing. Amon is playing Lord Maul with OB2 and the Super Commandos. So a Mother Maul list basically is what we're looking at right yep. now. So Fifth Brother is going to go. Using the jump because he's in engaged with Maul, so trying to get out of the Got okay. it. So he's, so he's going to use his jump to try and get out of engagement range so he can do a full movement. So that is going to cost him one force for that for that movement, which, you know, not too, which isn't too bad. I mean, yeah, it the, seems worth it. But then he jumped into engagement. Oh, no. So he jumped, jumped out of engagement with one group to jump into engagement with another group, which, you know, that can't happen. There's, there is a lot of people all, all about it. But he did do his force jump. Which is, so basically, if you're engaged, you can only do your dash movement. You can't do your full advance. And he goes basically will go and attack his super commandos. Now, looking at overall, there was a failure. He has two expertise. The expertise are going to turn into a critical and a one just straight damage through. Amon has three blocks here, so two successes down the tree. So basically going to be a two damage and a strain for sure and it's a matter of if he wants to do a shove or an expose on to the okay. super command so i decided to do the expose okay. and the strain and an additional damage goes through because of the expertise chart. Okay. so three damage total i don't believe that's going to be enough to wound them so I, they won't get the momentum Excuse there me. but Oh, Aub Aubrey, Aubrey gets cold easily. I was easily. keeping it warm for you. Aubrey gets cold easily. It's like easily. preheating it. It is very cold through here. I'm we, always cold. Well, we are at the end of the, the, the one end of the convention mm -hmm. center, 
And we've got and loading docks there. The, and, and the loading there. docks are yeah. right right off of us. So and basically, yeah. these air things they pump a nice. I mean, we are near Chicago. It is the windy city, so it's just windy everywhere. Yeah. So now Obi Wan, out of hiding, is going to go. Obi Wan has an ability if he is engaged with anyone, he can go ahead and use his ability. Or if anyone is engaged, they can use their ability to do a long movement. It, or he can do it himself, and they also get to do a recover action as well. So it's, it's basically a reposition, which is okay. Whoop, up on top. So he's going to go do. Obi Wan is going to move himself up on top of the garage there uh, with that run ability. And then he's going to take cover. And I believe this is going to be enough for them to end that. Yeah, end the struggle. Yep. Okay. So that they won struggle yep. one. So now what's going to happen is basically we go to struggle two. They'll go ahead and select the next one of the next three missions that are available, and then on, on top, then they, the whoever lost gets to choose which one of these okay. where the active places are going to be. Cool. They can vary from from location to location. And based off of who won priority is going to dictate which way this is facing on the map. Okay, itself. that's pretty cool. I like that. So they're going to go with the regroup. Let's go ahead and shift over to the, just so we can see where they're going to place the active objective. We'll go to the overhead cam here for a little while and see where they're going to put their active objective. So they have a decision whether they go with the bottom one or the top one on Amon's side and on the Hello There side. So we're going to see kind of what objectives. It looks like they're going to go with the bottom on the Hello There side. It'll be the top in the middle and then the top on the last minute side. And basically they're trying to select the, whichever objectives are best for them so they can hopefully win this struggle and, sure, and take yeah. it to a game three. Yeah. Anything that you can use to like swing it your way as far as advantage goes. Exactly. Now that's tactical talk right there. And not just accidentally tactical. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not like Taylor. Yeah, so they're going to go with the, the top side of the, they're jamming our, our comms. So it basically, if you're following along on your on your bingo card, that's going to be the one that we do today. Okay. I didn't put out any bingo, bingo cards, but you know, <laughs> maybe next year we'll have Shatterpoint bingo yep, cards yep. for all of our all of our people at home following along. Put that along. on the to-do list. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're just kind of putting the uh, spots there, figuring out where the best one to go is and everything like that. And just There's a little bit... So the other piece of this is, if you've noticed when you're looking at the cards, they have different symbols instead of just the active instead circles. Around, yeah. So what that is, is at the beginning of each person's activation, they roll a defensive dice, and there's two symbols for each one of those on that okay. dice. Whichever symbol they roll, that is now the priority point. That priority point is worth two points instead oh, of the normal one. Oh, okay. So okay. That, that's also, so you can score up to four points per round and, and if you are controlling all of them. Okay. Very cool. And, all right. The priority point looks to be uh, the failure, from what I can understand here. Middle. Oh, the way it was set up, like, okay, I see it now. It wasn't, I was looking at it backwards. Not a problem. So it is, it's the top four on the on the last minute side, the bottom middle, and the bottom on uh, the hello there side. And it looks like they're using Grand Inquisitor here. So Grand Inquisitor I will go ahead and move one of his wonderful friends of the in Inquisitorious Mandate that they are forward using that you-know-who-we-are ability. And basically can dash one forward. So that's what he did with Fifth Brother. So, uh, when no mercy from Mandalorian Super Commando. So Fifth Brother left engagement, which means he took two damage, notably, Moonsome. he's now within. 
So basically, Fifth Brother did that movement, moved out of engagement range. Fortunately, that was for Granite Wizards. Yeah, Granite Wizards. Mm -hmm. that, that caused okay. Fifth Brother to take two damage because of No Mercy. No Mercy did two damage, the two damage to Fifth Brother caused him to wound. So now, anything that he does, when, once you become wounded or injured, anything that you do costs an extra force. Oh my gosh, so okay. So it, it really okay. hinders their ability Ooh, to do yeah. things. So you want to try and keep them healthy for as long as mm -hmm. possible because for, they were forced to such a finite resource. Yeah. All right, and it looks like he's going to be doing an attack here. He is exposed. Pretty, not really, not really the best result is two. Three damage. Four, four total damage. Four total damage going through. And I think a pin. Yeah, four total damage and a pin. All right. Because you did get down a, quite a bit of expertise there. Which um, that's unfortunate sometimes when you get all that expertise, it just doesn't do any, what, what you want it to do. <laughs> so Shane happens to be one of our patrons for Momentous. Okay, cool, so, cool, like, cool. He, he's very active in a lot of the different chats. That's and, awesome. And, and I, I see him on, he's on the discords, that, for all the different discords. Yeah. Yep. Ba, 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 ba. And we got a Shatterpoint card coming up. And now Amon and, and Jesse will definitely be thinking about like what is the best option right. for you here. Yes. Because this is, and this is why you kind of want to wait to use that Shatterpoint card, mm -hmm. is because now they're deep into struggle too. This is like, if they can do what they can do to sit there and steal the struggle away, they win the game. Yeah. So having that late sh activation of, of the Shatterpoint card, being able to sit there okay. and utilize whoever you want. Yeah. Who would you Shatterpoint? Ooh. I don't even know. I know, right? It's Who a hard decision. Who do they decision. have available, even? Right? I, well, you know, in all honesty, I mean, you have Lord Maul is always a great one to go with. And you said that he's, like, super just, like, in your face. Yeah. I mean, beat him up. He's already up front there. You can move him just about anywhere you want to go. So I know that's yeah. where you were thinking. Absolutely. Because yeah, like, right if there's one thing I really like, it's aggression. Exactly. So yeah. I just want to do the <laughs> most aggressive thing. Exactly. <laughs> It's the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like, let's do it, kids. Double-bladed red lightsabers yes. is what I love. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of double-bladed lightsabers out there right now. You got Lord Maul, you got his brother, Savage Press, both with those. And you got the Inquisitors with, with Fifth Brother and mm -hmm. Grand Inquisitor. So just a lot of double-bladed red lightsabers. There's a lot of anger, hate, and aggression going yes. on out there. yes. And they don't even have Vader out there to have that anger, hate, and aggression. Right. It's just, it's just naturally happening. It's just deep within yourself. Exactly. <laughs> Mother Talzin. So I'm going to start with her dash. Okay. Mother Talzin is a, a great one as well. So now she's yeah. going to go ahead and, of course, because you're activating her, you're getting those two movements out of Savage mm -hmm. Press again. So just kind of letting him go and be that angry person that... And he, we haven't even seen him activate yet. Yeah. So once he's, like, they're going to have him in exactly the position they want once he is able to activate. And Aubrey's over here trying to remember how to play the game. Vocabulary is very important. As an English teacher, I can attest to that. Yeah, I mean, we have two teachers here with PCN, like, just to make sure that we are using the proper vernacular whenever mm -hmm. possible. That's right. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, they're pretty deep in the tank here as far as, like, figuring out exactly what to go. But like I said, this is pretty pivotal for, for uh, the gentleman over at, uh, hello there. But yeah, and the nice thing is, so if you see, they got a momentum because auto activation, and that's because of that wound for, to Fifth Brother. So they, they okay. it actually helped them out even when it wasn't their turn. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's very cool. And 
they're just definitely wanting to make sure they're making the right moves for sure. And I might be kicking you out of here at some point in time because I know yeah. Will is going to be coming by shortly. Absolutely. I won't give up my seat for many people, but Will Schick is one of them. He's right on. He's up yeah. there on the list. Yeah, you know? absolutely. I makes won't sense. Even make, I won't even make him fight me for it. No? Not Most even people, an, I'm like, fight me. What about an arm wrestle? We could have an arm wrestle. No, no? thumb war. Thumb, thumb war. Thumb war. Okay, I'm, I'm down with the thumb wars. Yes. I like it. That's the only thing I can beat Dan at physically is a thumb war. <laughs> I mean, can't you beat him with the mental games that of all of the different things that you do? Like, because you guys play sure. a lot of DM and stuff too, a lot, a lot of RPGs. Yes. Yes. So, because like, you guys are all on those podcasts together. Yep. I yep. love Grim Grim Tales, so that's amazing. Yeah. Yep. That's my favorite. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, your guys I love like some of the best RPG podcasts out there. Yeah, thank uh, you. Is basically, thank you. is anything that you, is the stuff you find on professional. Yeah. Games. I always tell my students when they're like, oh my God, you have a podcast? What is it? And I always tell them Dan's show because I'm like, his show's just better. Like, <laughs> it's like the best one that we do. It's, I mean, it's great. I mean, I, I, I love, I mean, Taylor, I love, I've loved Taylor since like, I, before I even met him. I'm like, uh -huh, I'm just drawn to Taylor uh -huh. as a person. So like, him getting his own podcast was amazing as yes. well with, with the beards. Yes, Beards and Skulls. Yeah, yeah beard, that one's beard. really cool. I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not big into, you know, all the different games and stuff yep. like that. Yep. Manipulating hands using two force, last of the force are there all together. So basically, you choose an enemy within range four, and they can, and you move them. Okay. Um, you, so you resolve yeah. that movement. Basically saying, no, I don't want you there. Yeah, I want you over you. there. Move over there. Thank you. Yep. But yeah, so manipulating hands over. So staying on great mother's side. And they're staying on the great mother's side. So basically, right over here, and gonna go and do that attack. A lot of expertise here. I believe it's a ranged attack, so if that's three expertise, which I think it was, it's gonna be a critical and two strikes. Yep, it was three. They blocked two. So I believe we're going two, maybe three down the chart. If that was only two damage, then it's just a crit and a hit, so maybe it's only two. Either way, that's what. Shove exposed by damage. Exactly. Shove, expose, and five damage. Dang. Mother Talzin hits hard. She, yeah. She's an angry mom. And so that will wound Kalani. That wounds Kalani. And that's that's pretty painful for last for, good move for them. Yeah. And they score wow. four points here. So they have all four points, or all three points. So this is critical right now for last minute. They really need to come around. So the, but Django Fett is a very good character to have go okay. right now. Going with Django, uh, he has a lot of displacement himself, so he has an ability where he can do what's called capture wire and can pull somebody right off of the point All that right. they're on. That would so, be super advantageous right now. Right now would be a great time to have that. Let's see kind of what they're going to end up doing with that. So, yeah, basically, he has a jetpack. He has capture wire. I don't see their force, unfortunately, so I don't know how much they have available. But depending on that, because we're getting towards the end of their, or their, their order deck, which is like the deck that they pull their cards from. So usually when you get to this point, you're... If you, if you haven't managed everything exactly how you want, you might be low on force and not be able to do all of the things so they want. So then that'll kind of limit what he's able to do. Correct, here. because okay. jetpack is going to cost a force if they need to jump into a position. Capture wire is going to cost a force if they want to do that. So it really, and, and capture wire is great because you displace them by a range two and you pin them so they can't move. That's awesome. So, so that really, I hope that they have enough force to be able to pull that at least off because at that least would be one, huge right now. At least one of those would be really, really yeah, I think that that like pin effect is really, really crucial, especially in the second struggle where you're trying specifically to get those um, very specific points. And if you can make it so that your opponent can't. Exactly. Focus jetpack. So. Advance focus jetpack. And the focus, they should have got them a an, an extra jetpack yeah. as well. Okay. Yeah. So they did two jetpacks. Yeah. So okay. they moved. Focus to get the the one jetpack, and then they spade a power a power to do another jetpack. So basically, there's a, a long move and two short moves. Okay, is, is the equivalent of what very really mobile. happened there. Very very mobile. Yes, he is. He can move all over the place. Because if he takes a focus action, which gives him that extra attack dice, it just automatically lets him jump. Now he did the two actions of the move and the focus, so that they are not able to do an attack. Yet. Okay. 
they're going to play it out. Yeah. Okay. So sure. basically, at this point in time, he didn't have the point. They're going. Amon and Jesse are going to be able to score out here at this point in time okay. and, and, and the at match. But tiebreakers for the purposes of your seating in long things is dictated by the amount of wounds that you do. Okay. So they're basically going to try and do as much violence as right. possible Absolutely. on the way out the door. Yeah. Yep. And it's fitting that it's Amon as the Sith Lord trying to do as much violence as possible as he I shuts respect the door. it. I, I, I respect like it. it. I do. I'm here it's, for it's, it. It is Total, total Sith, and I'm, I'm by, I'm, I'm picking up what, what, what Amon's putting down yeah. right now. He's, he's just all in on that Sith vibe, and I'm loving it. <laughs> now over at the MCP and the table, we got the like splash glass for right. the blood, but you guys don't have that here, so I'm glad I've got my glasses on. <laughs> Blood's getting spilled. Yep. But no, it was great. I mean, a yeah. great game. Uh, well, very well played by Amon and Jesse, which. If you if you listen to their podcast, which I'm, I'm sure a lot of people do, for sure, it's fa they they are fantastic players. I mean, both of them have, play at elite levels of play, so not really unexpected. Thank you for watching round two of the team tournament at Adepticon 2024. We will be posting the third and fourth round as well for continuing coverage of Adepticon 2024's team event.